Hello everyone, this is Mary Gray with MAS Coding Solutions. Uh, welcome back to our program. We are doing part two. Today we're looking at MSDRGs. We're looking up the makeup of those MSDRGs. And we stopped talking with um, uh, MDC-1, which is the nervous system, which contains all of the diagnoses that may relate to the nervous system. Before we go any further, I want you to know how is this, how do they break down these MSDOGs? Okay, so we know you got surgical and you have medical. And as I stated in the last uh, episode, surgical is determined by CMS, not by us. Not about, we don't get to determine that. So you may have a patient that go to the OR, the operating room, and, and CMS will not give you a surgical MSDOG payment. And there are times when something may be done at the bedside. And CMS says it's a surgical procedure. And so that's why it's critical for you as a coder to know what you need to code. That's critical. Now, the other thing that makes up that uh, MSDRG is the principal diagnosis. That is why we must get the principal correct. That is why you must understand how to apply that definition, the condition established after study to be chiefly responsible for occasioning the admission to the hospital for care. And sometimes that's just, that is not an easy thing sometimes. So we got to know how to get that principle. We got to know how to get our secondary diagnosis. Do you know the definition of a secondary diagnosis? It's a condition that affect the treatment received? Did it increase the nursing care? What did it do? How did it affect? Now, let you in on a secret. There are some conditions that's always going to affect the care, regardless if the physician said it or not. See, you as a coder, it's your responsibility to know that there are certain conditions that's going to affect that MSDRG. There's certain conditions that's going to affect the patient. And the physician expects us to have enough sense to understand that. Anybody that has COPD is always going to be treated different. Will the physician say, well, the patient has COPD, I'm going to treat them different? No. No. They're not going to say that. You have to know, if this patient has COPD, not an exacerbation per se, but just having COPD that patient is going to be treated different. You know why? Number one, you can't give a CO, you don't want to give a COPD person a sedative. So they're going to think about the medication. Uh, does that COPD patient require oxygen? Now we're increasing the nursing care. So your secondary diagnosis are very important. Not every secondary diagnosis is a CC or a major CC. Okay? Uh, but we have to code all diagnoses that affect care, regardless if it's a CC or not. See, I'm going to code my hypertension when someone comes in with hypertension. And see, hypertension is not a CC. It's not a major CC. It does not affect reimbursement. But I'm going to code that because that's going to affect the way the patient is going to be treated. You know, uh, diet or whatever. Uh, so pre-existing, see, a, a CC, the complication, comorbidity. And remember, comorbidity means this is something that the patient had when they came in. Now, sometimes people have stuff when they come in, but they don't know they have it. And so POAs also is very important uh, as well in the, uh, uh, when uh, determining if you're going to get full reimbursement. But that's a whole different story for a whole different day. Sometimes the discharge status can affect MSDRGs. Now we have this thing called transfers MSDRGs. They are not the same as a MSDRG where the discharge status actually affects the reimbursement. Transfer MSDRGs affect reimbursement in a different way. So let's say, for instance, if you have a patient that has pneumonia and the payment is um, $6,000, but they get transferred to a nursing home, skilled, skilled facility, 
uh, discharge status 03. Now what's going to happen, and they get transferred within three days. What's going to happen is the facility will have to split that $6,000 with that nursing home. Now, let's look at one where the discharge, so you're always going to get $6,000. But you, uh, you're going to get $6,000 if the patient went home. You get to keep it all. If your patient go to a skilled facility or they go to home health, now you're going to have to share some money. But let's look at one where the DRG itself is actually affected by the discharge status. If you get to, uh, you can just Google it. This, you don't have to buy a book. If you want to buy a book, you can. Uh, I personally have always bought the uh, Optum DRG Expert, uh, but you don't have to. All right, I'm going to tell you about a website you can go to and you can see all these DRGs for yourself. Um, so uh, we, we're talking about uh, how these DRGs are set up and everything. Now, so if I have a DRG, I believe it was two... Uh, let's see here. I was in the circulatory system. I was looking at MI. If you have an MI patient, uh, MSDRG 281, that MSDRG specifically says MI discharged alive with a CC. If you have an MI that died, MSDRG uh, 284, it says Acute MI expired. The money is different. So uh, my 281, I'm going to get full reimbursement and I'm going to get more money because they went home alive. The, I'm not sure why CMS feel like you need less money if you die, but they do. So I'm going to get less money when my patient expires. And there's one, a uh, couple more like that, I believe. Uh, babies uh, that are transferred to different facilities or a baby that's born, born um, uh, that died uh, they are uh, treated different they get uh, that discharge status affect that MSDRG uh, so there are some MSDRGs where the discharge status itself affects uh, the reimbursement and then we have what we call our transfer DRGs I don't think on uh, most of the tests they ask you anything about um, transfers, MS DRGs, uh, but they do ask you about uh, DRGs. The other thing that I always encourage people when you're taking a test, uh, you may not work with MS DRGs. And you may say, I don't even know what a CC is. I don't know what a major CC is. If you have a book, at some point in time, I'm going to go to category I-21 uh, in my book. Now, of course, like I said, you uh, your book could be a little bit different. I'm using the older book here. So my I-21 is uh, MI. By my I-21, beside in my book here, my I-21 have a MCC. That means it's a major CC. That's major. Then I have, uh, if you look at I-50, if you go to I-50, and let's look at I-50-40. That says CC. So major CC is reimbursable at a higher amount than a CC. And guess what, people? With the MSDRGs, you can own, if you're only going to be reimbursed on one. So I may have a major CC and a CC, but I'm only going to get one, one reimbursement, and it's for the major. I'm not going to get reimbursed for the CC. See, if I don't have a major and just have a CC, then I'm going to get reimbursed for the CC. But you only get one reimbursement, and you're always going to get the highest reimbursement. So whatever is driving it is going to be what you're going to get reimbursed. The other thing that uh, I realized about the MSDRG, uh, some of these MSG, uh, MSDRGs are what we call three tiers. Some are two tiers. 
and some are one tears. And um, you want a scent when you take the HEMA uh, CCS test, you will have you have your book. And so you can uh, kind of figure it out. You have your um, your uh, CM book. Of course, you won't have be able to have a MSDRG book. So always remember this: the lower the number, the higher the reimbursement. So if I have a number that says 281, 282, and 283, 281 is going to be the highest reimbursement. 282 would be the next highest, and 283 would be the lowest. Um, and sometimes you have two numbers, and it's the same thing with two numbers. The lower the number, the higher the reimbursement. So keep that in mind when you are looking at this. Uh, let's see, what else we need to tell you about? And I just want to mention this. It's kind of interesting a while back, maybe about a month ago, I did an uh, on-site uh, CCS review. And I was telling people about their books. So it was a young lady in my class. Uh, she was studying. And I had said to her and to my class, when you, uh, in your book, it'll tell you if you have a CC or MCC beside the number. If you don't have an MCC beside the number or a CC beside the number, that means that that number is not... A CC and it will or MCC and it will not increase your reimbursement. If you looked at I ten, I ten is totally blank, so it's not a CC. It's not a major CC. It's nothing. Uh, it's not going to increase reimbursement. So to make a long story short, uh, she called me and said uh, she she te she emailed me that she did not see MCC or CC in her book. And I said, well, send me a copy, take a picture and send it to me, you know. And I looked at it, and all her book did was describe HCC, the risk adjustment diagnosis. Now, in the old days when we had three books, we used to have three books. We had the CM, and we had we had the index, we had a tabler, and we had for inpatient code, and we had the third volume for the procedures. When we went to 10, of course, everything CM was condensed. So index tablets in one book, PCS is in another book. And what happened was in the old days, on the 9, they used to sell what they call physician-based book. And then they had, they sold what they call hospital-based books. Today, if you think you're going to want to go work for a facility at some point in your life, don't buy a physician-based book. Really, there's no sense in it anymore. Uh, because your CM book now, check me out. They are, not only do it give you your CC and your MCCs, it also gives you your HCC. And the physician-based book will not give you CCs and MCCs. It only gives you HCCs. So be careful with the kind of book you're going to buy. And think about what you want to do. You know, if you want to take the CCS someday, don't buy a physician-based book. Just buy a regular ICD-10 CM book. You don't even have to buy one that's at hospital. Now, uh, of course, a lot of different book companies, they do sell what they call, quote, expert books, where they try to give you a lot of notes, a lot of hints, to help you to become a better coder. But at the end of the day, you become a better coder, by working at it, by studying, and uh, always improving yourself. Yes, it's good to have these little hints from time to time, but you will be the one to decide how good of a coder you're going to be. Because you will decide you're going you're gonna to really study. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, once again, that last CCS prep I did, when I walked in, this guy says to me, one of the students in the class, they say, Tell me how to pass this test. What? Yeah, I, yes, I want you to pass the test. But more than that, I really want you to be a great CCS where you can go out and you can get a job and you can demonstrate that you have earned that credential. 
what is it now with people wanting that everything to be so easy? You want to be a great coder, you have to work at it. Coding is not hard, but you're going to work hard at it. And so, with that, I'm going to end it today. Uh, that I, I just couldn't get over that mindset. You want to be a CCS because you want to demonstrate that you can do the job. That's what it's about. It's not to just get this credential so you can get a job and then you cannot even code. And they're going to let you go. Okay? They're not going to keep you just because you're a CCS. They're going to keep you because you're going to demonstrate the ability to uh, grow in that role. You're going to know your basic coding guidelines and they're going to teach you and you can be teachable. Just wanted to remind everybody of that. So, <laughs> I tell you what, I enjoy coming into your homes or your cars, wherever you may be listening to this. I really do enjoy it. And I want you to be successful. We need great coders. So, remember to follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. I don't quite do Instagram yet. I'm trying to get there, okay? And our website, www.mascodingsolutions.com. And look for the uh, end of this full course uh, at the end of April. Talk to you soon.